Hey guys and welcome back. This is Mike Romans at MH Tutorials and today we're going to do a basic lighting tutorial. So if you have uh, experience in Maya you can skip this one uh, but this is mainly to explain the different types of lights that you can use in Maya. I'm not going to go into great detail about settings but uh, the general purpose so uh, let's get started with that. Okay. So I need to set up a quick scene so you don't have to follow me doing that. I'm just going to set up a ground plane I'll uh, drag a cube up, something like that, and maybe a sphere over here, something like that. Just make sure that I'll hit 5 for shaded mode, and I'll make sure that they're uh, on the grid somewhat. Okay, here we go. Okay, so if you want to apply lights in Maya, uh, you're going to go up to Create, go down to Lights, and then you got a list of lights here, Ambient Light, Direction Light, Point light, spotlight, area light, volume light. Okay, we're going to go through these, high level, as uh, I said. And then you got two additional types. One is image-based lighting using HDRI files. I'll get to that later. And one is physical sun and sky. Okay, now you would expect that we would start with ambient light, but we're not. We're going to start with directional light. The reason for that is uh, that ambient light, I call that uh, supporting light, if you will. Uh, so I typically use that in combination with other lights to create a certain effect. So we're going to start off with directional light. Okay. So I'm going to click on that, and as you can see, in the middle of my grid, and I'll just hit F to zoom in, you see four arrows. Okay. Now, you would think that because of those four arrows, there are light coming out of these four, just these four. But in fact, uh, if you look at it this way, if you draw a vertical line in the sky like that, all the light is pointing that way, right? You can compare it to sunlight. So whether I move this up here or down here, it doesn't matter. And what I'll do is I'll hit uh, 7 on my keyboard. So uh, light is uh, activated, so to speak. So if I move this up or down, left or right, there's no difference at all, okay? But what if I hit E to rotate it? Look at my ground plane. We're starting to get light. Okay. And once I move out again, it's going. Okay. So this light is coming from all directions. The only thing defined is that it is this direction. So if I move it like that, you got the same deal. Okay. So pretty similar to the sun. All right. So that's directional light. Now we're going to delete that. We're going to go back to lights. I'm going to go to lights and we're going to select point light and I'll just hit W and pull that up. Now a point light is very similar to uh, a light bulb. Okay, um, There's no one side to it. This object here is projecting light in all directions. Okay, So it's like a dot in space. Now the interesting thing is if you render this out you won't see the actual light itself. Right, you'll just see the light that has been generated by it. So you can't just stick this into a scene and expect to see uh, the effect of a light bulb. Okay, but the uh, light that's uh, coming from it uh, that looks like a light bulb. Okay, so can you rotate this? Yes, you can, but there's no effect, right? Because it's going all directions anyway. Can you move it up and down? Yes, you can, and that will have an effect, as you can see. Okay. Can you scale it up? Yes, but again, no effect, right? So that's the point light. Now, while we have the point light in our scene, I'm going to show you what ambient light does, okay? Oops, I got my ground plane. Just get my light there, all right? So I'm going to move that over to my sphere here, and we're just going to hit F to zoom in. Okay, when I use... A uh, point light in the scene. As you can see, um, this is catching all the light at this end. This end is very, very dark. All right. Now, ambient light, what is that? Uh, let's say you got a light switch in your living room. Okay. You switch on the light, you got a very uh, focused light source, for example, a light bulb, and that is spreading light in your room. But even if you switch the light off, you still have light in your room, right? It's coming from outside, it's reflecting off white walls and so forth. So that is my uh, my description of ambient light. 
So if I want to have some light here as well, and what I'll do is I'll just create some shadows here so you can see it better. So I'm going to go into my tab here. I'm going to go to shadows. Okay. So if I render this, you see shadows here. They're very, very black, and it's taking away even the shape of the sphere here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave my point light alone. I'm going to go up to Create Lights and select Ambient Light. Okay. Immediately, as you see, you know it's coming much, much brighter. Okay. Now you see there is some effect to it. What you can do with Ambient Light, but not much. All right. So we're just going to leave that, and now we're going to render again. Now what I'll do is I'll just uh, save this image here, so keep that image, and then I'll just get rid of my ambient light, and I'll render again. Okay, so this is without ambient light, and this is with ambient light. So hopefully that describes the function of it. You still have your shadow here, but you have more texture at this end. You can see your sphere better and so forth. All right? Good. So we'll get rid of that. And all is dark again. Okay. Um, all right. So we've got point light, spotlight. Now that is a very important one. You can use that for a lot of things. I'll just uh, drag that up. But obviously you can use it as a spotlight. And I'll just... Uh, you know, rotate that in. So a spotlight is exactly what you expect it to be. It's a spotlight, right? Now, there are a lot of things you can do with a spotlight, uh, but it has a one direction, typically. It has a, a focus on an object, and you can increase or decrease that. You cannot do that by hitting R. I mean, scaling this up won't give me more light unless I just take it out completely and I make it a negative right but besides that not so much but if you have a, a spotlight and you go into the attribute editor right uh, let's see we go into our spotlight and we scroll down a bit okay you got a cone angle for example we can not play with that and as you see that does have an effect you can make it a very narrow spotlight or a very wide spotlight that's one thing you can do. The penumbra angle, what that does is, um, you know, it's, if you've got a hard edge on uh, the, the outer side of your shadow, you can soften that, for example. But I promise I wouldn't go into the settings too much. One little trick, though, that I can uh, show you is if you hit T on a keyboard, you'll get this set up here. Now, what's that for? It's pretty neat. Uh, I'll just undo that. That's one too much. Uh, okay. Never mind. Okay, so I got my spotlight, and I got this shape here. Now, what this does is this controls what you're aiming at because sometimes it's difficult. If you are just controlling the shape itself, and you're in a scene, and you have to move this around like so, right? That can be tricky from a distance. So when you hit... T on your keyboard, like that, right? You can just pull this up and control it from the point that you're aiming at, which is, you know, much more convenient. Okay. All right. Enough about the spotlight. Uh, let's see what else. Okay. So we got the area light. So I'm just going to get rid of my spotlight here. Now the area light is pretty cool. Uh, lights and area light and uh, okay I got this um, additional control again I'll just pull that up okay if you look at this it starts off as a rectangular shape and it has this line sticking out of it the line sticking out of it gives the direction of the light so this shape is emitting light in that direction okay and I'll show you I'll hit E and I'll rotate that bit hard to see. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you see that where it's pointing at, that's where your light comes from. Now, 
what's neat about this one is first of all you can rotate it it's uh, one direction depending on what you're pointing at you can scale this and that is pretty important for example if you are uh, creating a building and it has a window in it you know you can take this light and shape it in the shape of your window and place it inside not necessarily to light your scene but um, uh, you can um, I'm, I'm trying to uh, yes you can emit photons from it I was just looking for that word okay so that is the area light uh, not too much about that one as I said you can uh, scale it you can rotate it and so forth okay back to lights just get rid of that one uh, lights and all right volume light now I'm not going to explain in great detail what this is first of all I personally never use it uh, but this is a very specific light type this uh, revolves around settings that will allow you to light objects inside this sphere or outside this sphere depending on your settings um, this is so special that there are uh, special uh, tutorials about how to use this light so I just want to skip that one for now okay because this is a basic tutorial all right let's get rid of that one so we got two more we got physical Sun and sky and we got image based lighting all right all right let's start with image based lighting I'm gonna go up to my render settings up here and if I switch to mental ray and I go to indirect lighting I got the option to choose image-based lighting or physical sun and sky okay and now I'm gonna start off with image-based lighting so when I hit create and I minimize this what you see is that a giant sphere has been created around my my scene okay but there's nothing on it so far now I got the opportunity over here on my attribute editor because this is selected to choose a file when I choose that file, that file, the 2D file will be wrapped around this sphere. Okay. Now this can be a photograph of a street, of an office, or whatnot. And that street or office has a certain light pattern, right? That light pattern will be used to illuminate your scene. That's, I think, the best way I can explain it. Okay. So I'm going to click on my folder here. And I can't just put in any other file. I need to have a, uh, a specific file type for that because you need a file that you can wrap around. Now, that is called an HDRI file, right? Now, HDRI files uh, are available for free in a lot of places. You can just uh, search for free HDR or HDRI files, right? You can download those and you can use that for this purpose. So I'm going to just uh, go with, uh, let's see, I got our Reno suburb file here. I'm just going to open that. And as you can see, it's now applied on my sphere. If I look into that, I can see houses, I can see a street, and so forth. Okay. So if I now go in to my scene here, like that, it's completely black, right? So if I render this out in a mental ray, and I have to do that in mental ray, okay and I just hit render as you can see I got light in my scene now this light is created by that image typically and especially when you're using reflective materials uh, this will give a very realistic lighting so I like this a lot okay all right so now the last one we're gonna go to render settings again we're gonna delete our image based lighting and we're going to create a physical sun and sky. All right. So now, uh, as you saw, the scene was just black just now. Okay. This here that I'm pulling up, this is my physical sun and sky. And it looks a lot like our directional light that we started with. Okay. We got the four arrows, meaning that light is all coming from one direction. Let's say the sun's up here somewhere. So that is blasting sun rays all the way down, right? So what you can do with this is you can hit E to rotate it, and that will affect, you know, where the light is pointing at, or in this direction. And that's how you can manipulate that. If we render this out, it's uh, 
usually pretty washed out because there's a lot of light in the scene like this so whenever you see scenes that are lighted like this typically that's done with the physical sun and sky okay uh, well that's it for now it's uh, again it's pretty basic but hopefully that will help you to understand the differences between the standard light settings again in every light type that we described there are a lot a lot a lot of settings that you can play with color intensity the color itself uh, and so forth um, one light type has more settings than the other I would especially look into uh, the spotlight if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time. Bye.